This is my new starting colony of carpenter ants. And they don't know it yet, but I'm about to give them an awesome new place to live. And you guys will love how they reacted to it. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. The ants within this test tube are up for quite a treat. And I think you will love how our ants react to the special new home I'm giving them. Watching ants move into a new home is truly one of the most gratifying things in the ant keeping hobby. And by the end of this video, you'll see why. But one of the things I managed to catch on my 4K camera was a shocker I completely didn't expect. I'll be needing your help, so stay tuned for all that coming up. Now before we go ahead and give our growing ant colony their new home, let's have a look at the progress of our ant colony since we last saw them a week ago. This here is the colony's founding test tube, in which the colony has been living since the moment they were born just a few months ago. The colony has about 30 or so workers now, all huddled into this founding test tube. And the only member of the colony who has ever known the outside world is the queen. Can you spot her? It can be tricky. There she is. See the wing scars on her back? Though some of the major workers are quite large and look similar, only the queen bears these wing scars, left behind from when she mated during her nuptial flight a few months ago and broke off her wings before being placed into this test tube to birth the starting colony. Her Royal Highness has been gracious enough to come out and allow herself to be seen by us. Isn't she gorgeous? She still needs a name, so please leave your name suggestions in the comments. Let's make her name a great one. I just love her caramel cherry color. And check out the detail of her compound eye. One thing I noticed about her that makes her unique is that she seems to have lost half an antenna, perhaps from a past flight or injury during nuptial flight. Not sure, but I'm happy it's not negatively impacting her too much from fulfilling her very important role in the colony, which you're about to see here. In the clearing of ants, what we see now is her latest batch of eggs. What a miracle, right? These eggs were laid just over the past two or three days, and some have even already hatched into larvae. Amazing to think that in just a few weeks, each of these eggs will be an adult ant. Now AC family, this might surprise you. Huddling nearby, is this black wasp-like member of the colony. If you're new to ants, guys, this is a male ant. And no, it's not the queen's husband who fathered this colony. Daddy ant died many months ago after mating with our queen. Also why there are technically no kings in the ant world. This handsome devil is actually the queen's firstborn son. He's just waiting around to breed during this year's nuptial flight later in the year. As time goes on, our queen will produce more and more male ants like him, as well as a fleet of virgin queen ants with wings, who will all be leaving the nest together on nuptial flight day to breed and start the ant life cycle all over again. But as cute and promising as this ant colony of ours is, there are a few problems. Look here. As you can see, the cotton of their test tube is molding. Though the ants have tried to keep as clean and sterile as possible, the cotton eventually does mold. The ants create garbage sites, which end up further feeding the mold. And on top of that, the first born ants have already begun to die off. There's a dead ant there, and here. The ants have placed them together to create a graveyard corner, and this has also led to more mold in their test tube. Now check this out, AC family. This will become important later on. If you look into the mold mass, you will see that there are tiny creatures living in it. These are mites, and they're eating up decaying matter and mold, which is a great thing. These mites are like the ants' biological janitors. But even the mites can only clean up so much. I knew our carpenter ants needed a new home at this stage of their evolution. And I had the perfect plan. It's time we give our ants their brand new home. AC family, behold this highly useful contraption. This here is called an AC test tube portal from AntsCanada.com. 
For me, this is an absolute must-have for ant keeping of starting colonies because it serves two very important functions, which you'll see in a moment. It has four openings, two on both sides, and comes with a perforated lid for ventilation with a very handy feeding chute, also with its own lid, so you don't always have to lift the entire lid off. For this move, I'll also be needing two AC test tube adapters, also from AntsCanada.com. This one with a more constricted end, and this one with an open end, both of which fit right into the test tube portal like so. For the other two holes, I'll be plugging them up with AC plugs, which are also perforated for ventilation. And finally, it's time to show you their brand new epic home! <clears throat> Another test tube. Okay, not the hugest change, but it's definitely an upgrade. This is an AC test tube, specially designed for ant keeping, as it's super spacious and has these special teeth that keep it from rolling around on a table and unnecessarily disturbing the colony. This is a cleaned, reused AC test tube that I used for our Phoenix Empire back in the day. So it's a special test tube for me that I hope our carpenter ants will love as well. I'll need to create a fresh new test tube setup for them. So I filled the test tube up to this guideline, popped in a cotton ball, and done! The ants' new home was ready. Now in any ordinary circumstance, I would connect this new test tube to the test tube adapter with the wider opening, but in this case, because we're trying to encourage the ants to leave their old home and into this new test tube, I'm going to connect it to the test tube adapter with the smaller opening. Because ants like their nest enclosed, with less air movement. So with the new test tube having a smaller opening, and their current moldy test tube having the larger airy opening, we increase the likelihood of the ants wanting to move out and into their new test tube. And now we see family, we've come to the moment of truth. Let's attach the ant colony's dirty test tube to this test tube adapter, leading to their new AC test tube portal and clean test tube setup. Now remember, the test tube they're currently in is the only space the ants have ever known. So this will be the colony's first taste of the outside world and freedom. Are you ready? Wish me luck. Here we go, removing the first cotton blocker. And now for the big challenge. It seems there are ants and a cocoon attached to the remaining cotton. So, I slowly and carefully pulled the cotton out, but for this last bit, I had no choice but to pinch off a bit of it with the cocoon attached. And done. I wasn't worried about this cocoon though, as one of the ants would surely come pick it up. But let's watch the ants explore. Immediately the ants emerged from the opening and into the big space of our test tube portal with curiosity and awe. The ants wandered around and headed back into the nest to tell the others. They stopped to frequently clean their antennae, which ants do to improve their sense of smell, especially in new spaces, kind of like picking your nose to smell things better. But at the nest, news of the new outside world was beginning to cause a bit of a buzz at the colony. The queen, however, was instinctively staying put for now, but was made aware that some of her workers had left the nest for the very first time of their lives. But the entire colony as a whole wasn't completely convinced the news of the outside world was worth getting excited about just yet. As expected, a worker came to bring the lone cocoon back to the nest. And then it happened. A curious ant found the small opening to our newly prepared test tube setup, and it instantly went back to inform the others. Just when I thought the move was about to become official, Strangely, five minutes later, it seemed the hype of new territory had died down. In fact, the colony had moved deeper into their moldy test tube. Now, AC family, here's where I'll show you the second useful function of this AC test tube portal. A place for food. How about a tasty morsel to lure out our ants? I bet they'd love this freshly cut up superworm, which they've never had before. I placed it into the test tube portal. A worker smelled the superworm and emerged but didn't seem to notice it. A few came out to check out the funky smell, but the ants didn't seem interested in it. Okay, so it seems the superworm was a bit of a flop plan at luring out our ants. The colony was determined to stay put, and the queen was certainly not going anywhere. I decided to leave the colony alone for the night and head to bed as it was late, and hopefully we would find the ants all moved into the new test tube by early morning.
I set my alarm for 4 a.m. and came back to check up on the colony. The ants were awake. It seems these carpenter ants are crepuscular, i.e. mostly active at dusk and dawn. And I caught one ant taking a quick taste of our superworm. But again, not too fond of it. I get it. Too gamey for you girls, right? I watched as a worker carried one of the dead ants into the test tube portal and placed it right next to our superworm. Okay, got the message loud and clear, girls. The ants actually felt our superworm gift was literal trash. I took out the superworm and the dead ant and wiped up the mess. In its place, I tried putting in another option. No ant can resist a good old roach head. Let's see how the ants like the taste of that. But one of the greatest things I noticed at this point was the ants were now finally checking out the new test tube and seemed to be very excited about it. A few hours later, right as the sun was rising, the ants were out and about. They were now feasting on the roach head. Sweet! And best of all, I saw that the ants were carrying batches of eggs into the new test tube. Yay! The ants were officially moving now. I even was lucky enough to catch the queen moving to the new test tube. The old test tube was still full of ants and brood, but this was about to change, especially now that the queen moved. Please excuse the tape guys, as the test tube was a tad larger than our AC test tubes, so it wasn't exactly a perfect fit, and I was afraid it would pop off in the middle of the night. I watched excitedly as the ants shipped the brood, batch by batch, out of the old test tube and into the new home. Here's where it all gets so satisfying to watch guys, so sit back and enjoy the process. All remaining brood were gently picked up and shipped out to their new pad by the workers. There wouldn't be a single baby left behind. The final cocoon was brought to the new nest location. This process of a colony moving to a new home, by the way, is called emigration. So at this point, though most of the colony had already emigrated to the new home, there were a few stubborn ants who weren't so thrilled about moving. This major replete here, who clearly had volunteered to be the living storage of all that consumed roach meat from outside, was suffering from food coma, and understandably didn't want to move right now. Though fellow sisters attempted to urge the replete to get up and move to the new nest, this replete was adamant about staying. And here's where things get quite hilarious. Check this out, guys. The ants tug at the stubborn major replete to get it moving. All right! She attempts to move forward. She emerges from the nest, but instead of heading to the new test tube, she makes a wrong turn and kind of gets lost, hangs out with this gang for a bit, then decides, you know what? I'm going to sneak back in and hope nobody notices. What a sneaky one. Oop, a quick scolding from a sibling. But ah, back into the shadows of the only home she's ever known. I mean, I don't blame her. Nothing beats familiar surroundings. But just as she was about to get comfy again, Along came another ant and took her by the mandible. You are coming with me, young lady. Ow, 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 she cried. Okay, I'm coming. And the strict ant made sure to leave a clear pheromonal trail this time, so the replete could follow and not lose her way. What a hilarious ant scene. The lazy male too was dragged out of the old nest to join the rest of the fam bam, until the only ant left was this sleeping ant who probably had no idea the colony had completely evacuated while it was snoozing. It's about to wake up in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And realization. Hey, where'd everybody go? 12 hours later, this is what the Carpenter Ant's new living space looked like. Their old test tube was long gone, and all the ants were nestled in nicely in their new test tube home, clean, and mold free. I think they rather liked their new home, wouldn't you say? It was great to know they no longer were in danger from the mold, and also had a new place outside the nest to dump all their garbage and dead for me to clean up, so I could drop their food in come feeding time in their test tube portal. 
This colony was well on their way to becoming a flourishing and awesome carpenter ant colony. I couldn't wait for them to get into the thousands, as carpenter ants have always been among my top favorite ants to keep as pets. Just a side note, if you would like to keep a carpenter ant colony of your own, well, I've got some good news. You're in luck, because carpenter ant nuptial flights start in the US, Canada, and Europe this month, and continue all the way until June, and even into July depending on species and location. So keep your eyes peeled for a queen ant. Also be sure to pick up all your ant keeping gear at antscanada.com. I look forward to keeping ants together with you guys. All right, so at the start of the video, I mentioned that I would be needing your help. It's time we give this new carpenter ant colony of ours a name. Your AC Senate and I have chosen from all your awesome name suggestions from my last video for this colony. And now I ask all of you watching, to cast your vote. In the comments, I've pinned a post under which all you need to do to vote is simply give a thumbs up on the reply post corresponding with your favorite of the five names. The name with the most number of votes will be the official name of our Carpenter Ant Colony. Thank you, AC Council, for your input. I can't wait to see what you guys vote for. All right. And now for the not so good news, guys. Also at the start of the video, I mentioned that I caught something crazy on camera while filming this episode. Have a look at this ant here. Do you notice something peculiar about it? There, under its head. When I saw it, my heart dropped into the pit of my stomach. <gasps> oh no, a mite, a huge one and one unlike any other I've ever seen before. Oh no, let's not panic guys. I'm not sure yet if these mites are bad as it's a new type I've never come across before. Any acarology experts out there want to take a stab at whether or not these mites are a danger to our ants? Are they the adults of the garbage eating mites we saw in the colony's old test tube? Anyway, I'll be getting to the bottom of this mite problem by next week's episode. So if you haven't yet, follow this ongoing saga by smashing that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to have a better look at the mites that are on our carpenter ants. It's crazy. Go check it out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit antscanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit antscanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is a replete? Congratulations to Spiders Layer 2, who answered, a replete is an ant that acts as a living food storage, collecting food in its social stomach and feeding other ants as needed. Congratulations, Spiders Layer 2. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what happens to a male ant after it mates? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.